your gospel is all about making sure that wherever you come from, you'll be able to hear the gospel. We're going to be starting off with Dutch. So here goes from Het Book from John 3, 16. Johannes 3, 16. Want God heeft zoveel liefd voor de wereld dat hij zijn enig zoon heeft gegeven, zodat ieder die in hem gelooft niet verloren gaat, maar eeuwig leven heeft. Your gospel aims to make the gospel available in languages from around the world. It's taken from John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Look out for more from your gospel at the top of the hour every hour on Gospel for Grampian. Listen dot g for g dot org dot uk if you'd like to catch up with our podcasts then it's podcast dot g for g dot org dot uk thank you for listening my name is ishbel imri and you are listening to gospel for grampian community radio for the north of scotland here to enrich lives good afternoon welcome along to this Community Elements show on this Friday uh, and we say welcome to Brian with his good set of good news stories beginning with surgery. Indeed. Nurses at a children's hospital have recorded a special song in a bid to raise cash for their ward. The team of surgical nurses from Royal Aberdeen Children's Hospital want to revamp their ward and the nurses station with new decor to brighten things up. They have been fundraising to make the improvements which they hope will make the area less daunting for children. As part of their efforts, the team, who call themselves the Surgical Sisters, recorded a song. More than ten staff members took part in the tune's lyrics, and the tune's lyrics mention their wish list, including what they hope to see changed in their ward. If successful in the bid to give the ward a makeover, the floor will be safari-themed, with jungle animals, wall transfers and comfortable furniture for visiting parents to sit on. Kelsey MacDonald, a senior charge nurse, said the ideas came about during a meeting with the Shared Governance Group, a scheme which helps nurses improve the quality of care they offer. She added, This isn't fundraising for core equipment, but the additional little things which make the place feel more like home and less scary for children. We put up posters and asked staff and parents what they wanted changed, so we decided we would like to raise some money because right now it's all very plain. We want the paediatric ward to be fun, colourful and bright because at the moment when you walk down the corridor it's all very white and clinical. It wouldn't be as daunting for a child. They won't be as scared. It would also help brighten the feel of the place. A friend of mine who was into music wrote and composed a song based on the things that we said we wanted to see improved. We recorded the song in an empty room and even one of the doctors and her kids stopped by and sang a small part of it. Some of the lyrics mention how the current space doesn't match the smiles on staff's faces and this is our wish list with colours in every corner. Children's charity, the Archie Foundation, is hoping to help the nurses meet their target and realise their ideals. The team has also taken part in all four kilt works, Aberdeen, Glasgow, Dundee and Edinburgh, to generate cash for the ward, and £2,953 has already been received in its Just Giving page. Anyone interested in donating should visit bit.ly forward slash 2 T D D W D S Window cleaner Peter Mackay has put up with a lot of strange looks over the past year after deciding to wear a kilt every day to raise money for a disabled friend. 
The 29-year-old who lives in Garth Lane near Huntley says fellow shoppers often do a double take as he strolls along buying groceries in the traditional garb while keeping his modesty intact and as he is climbing up the ladder. It can prove a bit of a challenge. Mr Mackay chose to embark on the unusual mission in order of friend Natty Lolly, who suffers from spinal injuries and needs new wheels worth £4,300 for her wheelchair. The father of two began the challenge last March, when he assumed the worst of the winter weather would have passed, but he was left facing freezing blasts from the latter stages of the Beast from the East. He has raised £1,100 towards the £4,500 target and has now resolved to continue wearing his cherished Mackay tartan and until he has cracked the fundraising goal. Mr Mackay said, Customers thought I was mad until they understood why I was doing it. I have now decided I am just going to keep going with it, even though it can be difficult on wet and windy days. It can be tricky to keep things modest when I'm going up the ladder, but I have a tool belt which helps keep everything in place. To donate, visit https colon forward slash forward slash bit dot ly forward slash 2 dr 5 lv 9. A Scottish government campaign is hoping to make looking for a new job child's play. Career changers will be targeted across Scotland over the next month as part of the child care recruitment scheme A Job and a Joy. There is a range of jobs available with training and development opportunities for a career in which individuals can earn as they learn. The campaign supports Holyrood's pledge to increase the hours of fundraising and of funded early learning and childcare available to families in Scotland to 1140 by 2020. And two North East early years practitioners would encourage others to join the profession, saying the job is truly rewarding. Harry Duncan, a senior early years practitioner at Angus Council, said, In this role, you truly have the capacity to make a difference to a child's life due to the day-to-day work that you do with the children. We create an environment that allows a child to feel safe, secure, valued and trusted. She added, I would highly recommend working in early learning and child care as it is a truly rewarding job. There are so many opportunities and every day is different and exciting. It's a sentiment echoed by Lauren Martin, who enjoys supporting children on their learning journey. The early years practitioner at Angus Council said, I enjoy helping children by providing a nutrition environment and supporting relationships amongst parents, children and staff. I found the job very rewarding. I work hard to provide resources and opportunities for children to show imagination and creativity to represent their work. This may include art, outdoor play, props to enhance storybooks, role play, etc. I feel listening to children and watching their progress as they transform to primary one is very rewarding as you notice the skills they have achieved with their support. Children's Minister Marie Todd said, Working with children is varied, enjoyable and meaningful. And this is the focus of our A Job for a Joy campaign. We know when people consider changing career, achieving a good work-life balance is essential alongside rewarding work. Our expansion of funding, early learning and childcare will create up to 11,000 high-quality and well-paid jobs across Scotland by 2020. A career in childcare is more than just a job, with opportunities for flexible working and career progression. I urge those who are looking for a change of career to seriously consider a role in childcare. For more information, visit https colon forward slash forward slash childcarecareerscotland.scot. An Aberdeen family paid tribute today to a woman whose positivity inspired all who met her. Fitness instructor Bev Gove, who passed away after a battle with uh, brain cancer, was known by many for her zest for life. 
Bev, 53 from Bridgedon, died on January 17th after being diagnosed last summer. Daughter Bex, 21, said positivity was her word. She never cried. She was an amazing mother. She did everything for me and was always the first person to argue my case. At Christmas, I went to build a bear and dressed a teddy in a gym gear and sewed in a heart. My mom called him Mr. Sniggles, which was the name of a bear she had given me when I was a child. She had it with her all the time. Bex, a media student in Glasgow, remembers her mum as having a keen sense of adventure. Last March, Bev, who taught at venues across the city, took her daughter skiing in the Alps for her 21st birthday. Bex said, The first day, conditions were really bad. We'd bought new goggles, but we'd forgotten to remove the cellophane from the inside, so things looked really blurry, and we thought it was a blizzard. I will never be able to thank my mum enough for all that she has done for me and for making me the woman I am today. Since Bev's death, hundreds of people have paid tribute to her on social media. Bev's mum, Audrey, 76, and dad, John, 80, have been really struck by the impact Bev has had on people. Audrey from Hilton said, All her friends are amazing. We had someone get in touch with us from Northern Ireland who knew Bev when she was 17. She was so busy, I used to say to her, when do we get slotted in? Even when she was very ill, she would speak about getting back up on her feet and driving again. Bev, a former Cornhill Primary and Hilton Academy pupil, had started taking keep fit classes at Amarada Hess, where she worked for many years before qualifying as an aerobics instructor in 1995. Between working as a personal assistant at Technip, Bev took classes at gyms and community centres across the city, building up a loyal following of fitness enthusiasts. Her health started to deteriorate last July when she was plagued by several headaches. She was admitted to hospital and an MRI showed that Bev had three brain tumours, two of which were inoperable. Scott Skinner, chocolate driver, was Bev's boyfriend in the last five years. He said she was a very positive person, which made me more positive. I feel grateful to have had her in my life. Now, we've had some encouraging stories today, and I believe we now have a very encouraging scripture text taken from Romans chapter 12, verse 10, which says, Be kindly affectionate to one to another with brotherly love, in honour, preferring one another. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Just thinking about this guy who carries on and on and on, and he plies his trade with a kilt on. Wow. Even in the midst of... uh, Very bad weather. uh, I would hate to be in America just at the moment. Oh, Oh, Just imagine him trying to try that in America. I think he would have more sense than that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But uh, anyway... It it takes a lot of courage to do that as well, doesn't it? Uh, Most certainly. But to be able to do that and uh, keep going and have raised this amount of money, and it would be good to think that more people would be willing to give some... Put themselves out for other people. To put themselves out and to actually give some money towards this cause. Mm -hmm. So hopefully... This gentleman doesn't have to uh, be out in the cold for, for too long. long. Yes, <laughs> I agree there. <coughs> He's doing a marvellous job there. I was just thinking that the other ones that we highlight, obviously, are the surgical sisters who have uh, recorded a song uh, to raise funds and working with the Archie Foundation to... Uh, make uh, the the, the children journey. there will be so much encouraged by the uh, the new decor and everything it will make them feel much more at home and wanted mm-hmm. and the nurses are showing so much care and which I, is I suppose it's what uh, we expect of nurses but they're going beyond what their normal uh, requirements but, are here but at the same time, I think that they really want to have something that not only is more welcoming for the children, but something that is a nicer place for them to work in. It, because when you have that, you're obviously going to be hopefully able to give give your best and 
you know, if they're just clinical white walls, uh, then they they can smile as much as they want, but it's not going to make it any easier for children. But very true. It would be it, it's for them too, which is a, a really good thing. Excellent. Then, then there's Bev, who whose daughter Bev, and Bex. Uh, Bev and Bex, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, that uh, oh, she was so much a. Uh, an encouraging person, as it speaks about her positivity. It, it uh, you get the impression that she was positive all the time. You, you can't imagine her being depressed at all, do you? No, because uh, she was putting other people before herself all the time. Yes, and uh, oh, it's such a marvelous uh, story. I mean, uh, you, you know, I was telling somebody. Uh, the other day that I had a story this week of somebody that had died. And they, they thought, huh? But surely no. I said, but it's not about her death, it's about her life. And a most uplifting life. Now, uh, it not only for the other people, but she would have felt uplifted because seeing all the encouragement that was received by so many people from her. That's brilliant, I think. Yeah, most definitely. Right, Brian, uh, any other stories that you know, well, the, the other one that you would want to uh, highlight? Well, uh, encouraging uh, children to... Uh, uh, people uh, to uh, switch jobs. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Now, uh, t- uh, that can be a very trying time. I yes. think most of us have experienced it in one way or another. Changing anything is very trying. I, I know that uh, uh, people have come from a different nationality and they've been living in this country for a good number of years but trying to change their passport so that it's all all good has been a real trial for them Mm -hmm. and wow you can't can't believe it sometimes how long these things take but they do and so much red tape to go along with it (laughs) indeed (laughs) the red tape gets in the way quite often Uh, but uh, certainly does but we can overcome, and uh, this scheme is designed for, to help people to overcome these problems and lift them up. And the information given here speaks about the, the joy that many people receive through helping. So it's not only the people that are helped, but the helpers. They're all lifted up. Yeah, I like stories like that. Yes. Well, that's good. Can we get you, please, to read out your scripture, please, uh, Brian? Will do, yes. Taken from Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honour, preferring one another. Amen. Excellent, Brian. Thank you very much. (coughs) Now, uh, just to... uh, Quite often, Brian and I go to Tory St. Fittick's. Uh, just to read out one or two what's on and then uh, I was thinking that we might also just have a quick chat about maybe some of the films that we've seen recently well I'll mention a certain film of the Mary Poppins variety that I saw the other day oh I bet you enjoyed that yes I certainly did but before I mention that uh, just to mention that at Taurus and Fetics they have a community cafe that's opened uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, really from about 9.30 uh, through until about uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So uh, they're open and uh, it's always a good thing to go in there. And we both enjoy it going we, in. We do indeed. Uh, they have uh, parents and toddlers every uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, and uh, they also uh, have, uh, there's a guild coming up and... Uh, on the February the 5th, and uh, Peter Fogiel will be talking about the Trans-Siberian Railway. Uh, there's also an urgent mm. uh, appeal for donations of bric-a-brac in good conditions. Um, so, the Taurus and Fittings are, are going on well, which is great. Mm. And now, just to uh, mention, at this time of year, I mean, quite honestly, Helen and I like uh, going to the cinema sometimes just have a bit of a night out and enjoy a film which is what we did last week so we went to go and see Mary Poppins or the return of Mary Poppins 
and you know how you get with sequels and sometimes the sequels are really not quite as good as uh, the yeah. actual main film itself but I know that you were saying you went to see Sister Act 2 when that was on and your view was? <laughs> well actually uh, I enjoyed Sister Act but then I thought well uh, I'll suffer uh, <laughs> I suffer Sister Act 2 because I expected it to be a downturn why was I dis well I wasn't disappointed because it it was better than Sister Act I thought, so it, wow. it, it challenged your perception it, it most certainly did indeed and yeah. uh, I enjoyed it very much so I think with uh, some films you have to go along with a, an open mind. Yeah, and this I, is true. And I went along with a thought, well, perhaps this might be okay, might be good. We would sort of see how it is. But I have to say it was most enjoyable. I'm not sure whether it was better than, but it was certainly at least as good as the Mary Poppins, the original one. That says quite a lot. Um, because, I mean, that was a classic in itself. And uh, this particular film was done very much in the style of the other, except uh, they didn't have chimney sweeps, they had lamp lighters. Oh. But they did the uh, dooly daddy uh, sort of uh, dally dancing, uh, and uh, it was well choreographed. Uh, this had a good storyline, which was still based around the bank, I have to say. Um, but uh, they did well, uh, and I, we really enjoyed it. That sounds very good. Uh, and Julie Waters was the cook housekeeper of the, the family. Uh, so it, I could almost see, imagine Paddington walking out of that kitchen at some, <laughs> at some point. It was that kind of film that you would have unexpected surprises happening during the film. And But it was a good film. Do you know that you are now responsible for me wanting to go and see it myself? I don't know whether it's still on at the cinema, but you'll have to go I will there. check. You will check. I'm sure you shall. Excellent. Um, definitely. And uh, we didn't actually have to uh, pay the full amount we, we, because we have a certain one of discount card for uh, certain restaurants. We're able to get uh, we're able to get cinema off at forty percent. Why not 100%? Oh, that would be even better, wouldn't it? <laughs> That's just me being greedy. <laughs> but uh, cer certainly having any amount off. So uh, there are discounts out there. So do have a little but look. And especially when you're dealing with a, a family of about uh, two adults and two children, uh, that can get quite expensive. Uh, yes. But all good. Anyway, we're coming to the end of our uh, readings uh, for today. And... Uh, we will certainly be back. Brian will be back next week at the same time. We look forward and, to that. Uh, this is Gospel for Grampian. Gospel Community Radio for North Scotland. Engaging, equipping and enabling communities to live life to the full with Christ Jesus at the centre. Now here we come on to our second of our community elements, uh, very food related this week and indeed actually next week as well, or in a couple of weeks in fact. Why? Well, this afternoon I popped along to the Zero Waste Cafe as it was being set up at uh, Zero Waste Cafe at Oro Old Tory Community Centre. Um, and things were really in a bit in a state of flux. So we stayed and gave them a hand to set up tables and chairs and such like. And next week we'll be back and uh, have a chat to Betty Lyons, who actually started up the uh, Zero Waste Cafe. And I think it'd be a good idea to have a wee look at the news article from this. And it's actually something that... Uh, Brian brought to us in his good news uh, a few weeks back. So this is a zero waste cafe that's still going strong. One year after its founders decided to tackle the problem of good food lending ending up on landfill. It was originally inspired by Robert Gordon's University Go Green sustainability campaign. Now that particular sustainability campaign is still going strong and we'll be coming to that one a little bit later on. 
The movement encourages people to become aware about where the food is sourced and get them eating more local fruit and vegetables. Every Friday night at Old Tory Community Centre, Betty and her volunteers cook up delicious dinners using ingredients from North East Food Bank. So Betty goes age Tuesday, I believe, to uh, Sea Fine at Point Oak Road and uh, gets food. And she then comes back and prepares a menu. Now, when I went along today, uh, I didn't hear any sign of a menu, but I'm sure that, uh, in fact, another one is being prepared and one of the most challenging things that Betty had to deal with was uh, 7,000 cocktail sausages. I mean, honestly, what would you do with that? But Betty actually did something. And if you have a little look at the most recent of their Christmas dinners, they even had pheasant soup. Uh, so it shows that Betty can turn some amazing food even simple local food, into even more amazing food. After one year, uh, the number of volunteers has gone up to nine. I met a few of these volunteers uh, just this afternoon, and uh, I certainly like to mention another lady called Helen, who was, uh, had already got in and was uh, setting things up. Uh, and uh, then there was Betty and then there's also David Fry as well so he'll be along next week as indeed will Betty as indeed will Helen and the other uh, lady as well there's also a band and if you want to go along tonight the food is prepared for free and it starts at 6 p.m. in the evening so that's actually at Old Tory Community Centre on Abbey Place and in fact just along the way from here we're along Crombie Road and just walking along here a little bit further for about five or so minutes walk away from here and you get to Abbey Place almost in a straight line so just uh, get along there and uh, you will be assured of a very warm welcome it was certainly really warm in that hall compared to the air outside right let's go on now to find out more about the Robert Gordon University's uh, Zero Waste. Now they've renamed their cafe Live Eco Cafe uh, and it was the first Zero Waste Cafe in Aberdeen. Through Live Eco Cafe you'll be finding volunteers cooking up a feast every Friday at Rutherston Community Centre. That's at uh, 532 to 536 Holborn Street, AB 10 7LL. And you'll enjoy a bowl of hearty vegan fair made uh, delicacies from a range of foods that come without plastic wrappings uh, that would otherwise be heading to landfill. Do look out on their Facebook page for regular events and come along and pay as you feel. So, uh, they do encourage people to leave a contribution uh, for this. Alongside low carbon food, the cafe also works with other societies to program a mixture of events each evening, from film screenings to how to workshops, providing visitors and volunteers with an educational and entertaining experiences. If you're interested in getting involved with this, the cafe could be your platform for your event or society. If you'd like to organise or evening uh, an evening programme with ethical and sustainable values as a given, get in touch. Beyond this, if you fancy getting your hands dirty in the kitchen, the Live Eco team is always looking for new volunteers. So do drop in there a line and see when you can go start chopping. Get in touch, live eco at rguunion.co.uk. RGU Union is all one word, and live eco is all one word. We'll give the information available as a post from our website, and that's visit.g4g.org.uk. Now, this is all happening tonight again between 6 pm and 8 pm. And uh, we'll pop the Facebook page uh, in and you can have a little look at that. 
This is Gospel for Grampian and uh, we've got a few uh, notices going out right now and uh, then a few more notices because i got some uh, notices, uh, two notices, one uh, from the Church of uh, Stockett Hill in the Cancri area and there's also Torrey Community Church, uh, St Fittick's Com- uh, Parish Church as well. So Keep listening in. This is Gospel for Grampian. I'm dreading this week. Never been so scared of anything in all my life. Not that I'd admit it to the missus, mind. I keep telling her it'll be alright. I'll be alright. Because this week is the week I get my bypass. The week I'll come round, smile, squeeze her hand and tell her she's got another 20 years worth of nagging me to death. The week I'll promise my wee grandson I'll be well enough to take him down the park again. And mean it. Won't it? Next week counts on yours. Please give blood. To find out where, when, and if you're the type to save Mick's life, visit scotblood.co.uk. We're here at the Aberdeen Seafarer Centre. Have you heard of us? Do you know what we do? We're here to care for the welfare of all seafarers, irrespective of race or religion, and give them some home comforts whilst they spend months away from family and friends. We're an island nation. Do you know that? I'm sure you do. Do you also know that without seafarers, our shelves in the supermarkets would dry up within eight days and you would have no food, you would have no fuel, and life would be miserable? We want you to be part of that story of caring for seafarers. There are many opportunities for you to help and volunteer with us. Why don't you come down to the Seafarer Centre any evening, 6pm to 10pm, and have a chat with Howard Drysdale, the Centre Superintendent and Manager. There are many opportunities to help, and if you get in touch with us, we'll give you those opportunities. We'll match your skill set and your gifting with the things that need to be done here. We couldn't survive without our volunteers, and the service we give to seafarers free is reliant on the many volunteers who come and give of their time to support seafarers from all over the world. It's fun, it's easy, it's a great thing to be doing, and you'll meet some wonderful people in the process. So get in touch with Howard Drysdale on 0775-4141-076 or by email at cchaplain, that is S-E-A-C-H-A-P-L-A-I-N, cchaplain at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Right, now here are those notices we spoke about. And the first of these notices comes from Stockett Hill Community Church in the Cancri uh, Community Centre. Now, a new group has started on Wednesday evening at 6.30, a nine-week course following on from Alpha, and it's called A Life Worth Living. It meets in the Community Centre in the bar, coffee bar area. If you're interested, uh, do speak to uh, some of the elders uh, and uh, it's either Graham Douglas, Fiona Douglas, uh, or Mary. Um, so that is uh, on Wednesday evening, 6.30. Um, so do speak to them, and we'll give you uh, some information about how you can do that. On There's a group within the congregation uh, of the church have been made aware about food poverty in the area and uh, hope that with the help of the three congregations to produce a recipe book of tried and tested easy to make low cost recipes if you'd like to share any of your own low cost recipes then again do give them to the elders or just uh, come along on a Sunday now the church services on a Sunday uh, start at 11am however you are more than welcome to come along for 10.30 a.m. when uh, you get uh, a grace and then uh, get a light breakfast and this includes coffee or tea and uh, it will also include uh, toast uh, or croissants and uh, jam or cheese or something like that. But it's in a very convivial atmosphere and then uh, the church service starts at 11 o'clock. Uh, so uh, well worthwhile going along to that. Now we've also got for Torrey St. Fittick's uh, Church and uh, 
Every Tuesday and every Thursday is a community cafe starting really about 9.30am through until about 3pm. And uh, also to mention that this Saturday at 12pm is a burn supper complete with Piper. Uh, however, I believe that all tickets have uh, uh, actually been sold for that one. So that one is uh, fully booked. And speaking about fully booked tickets uh, leads me on to uh, something else. In fact, it leads me on to uh, Aberdeen City Council Ranger Service and uh, my colleagues Duncan McNeil and also Jen Hickling, uh, two of my colleague Rangers who work for Aberdeen City Council Ranger Service. And they're going to be doing a special uh, event called Help the Heather on Kincorth Hill tomorrow. And that's between uh, 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. Hopefully the weather is going to be OK in the sense of uh, there being low wind speed. And uh, so there'll be a fire and then you can have baked potatoes. But... Uh, when we last looked at the weather, we weren't exactly sure uh, whether that would happen. I think wind speeds may well be a little bit too high, but you can still help the heather anyway. Uh, but you will need to fully book for that. And you can do that by uh, sending an email through to countrysideranger at aberdeencity.gov.uk uh, and uh, you can also pick up the phone and dial 01224-326-429 and uh, you might just be able to uh, book in on this particular event. Duncan and Jen will be in the office tomorrow, probably from about uh, quarter to nine onwards uh, or even earlier. And so they'll hopefully pick up your call. So that's uh, 01224-326-429. Even more pertinently about book tickets uh, in future and in the summer months uh, when the summer season of programme starts for Aberdeen City Council Ranger Service, uh, we will be putting our events on Eventbrite and that means that you can uh, book directly. Uh, the tickets are generally free um, except with our materials and uh, we do appreciate it when people do give a uh, donation as well which also helps us to be able to get in extra props and extra things to help uh, and, and make that uh, guided walk that event that bit more special so i'm uh, always uh, appreciative of uh, some donations as and when they come Anyway, tomorrow uh, it will be a good day, so do head up to Kingcourt Hill after phoning first, 01224-326-429. Anyway, that's it for the moment from uh, this Community Elements show for this week. And uh, we have got uh, some music from Father Song, and uh, we've also got some a thought from Dudley Anderson, Good Tracking. We wish you a great weekend and a great week next week. See you next week. And this evening, uh, you'll be able to uh, tune in to the program Power Hour, which is about applying God's word in prayer. Listen in from seven. Hi, this is to all the listeners of Gospel for Grampy. Wherever you are, this is Mark Campbell from the Scottish Borders saying have a blessed day. God bless.